Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Bay Area Case Studies Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us. We are really excited you're here. Before we get started, we do have a few housekeeping items to note. First, if you have any questions at all, feel free to use the Q&A button to type in your questions to the presenters at any time. They are here and available to answer your questions. Your camera and microphone are off. You are muted and your video is off. The panelists can't see or hear you. There are more sessions happening. This is one of many college presentations being offered, so feel free to sign up for more college presentations at the same place where you registered for this one. And lastly, all sessions are being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com backslash B-A-C-S. We are currently in session A5, where my mouse is circling at the moment. And this will also be the same order of presentations. Without further ado, I'll get out of the way and let's kick it off to our first representative from the University of Notre Dame. Thanks so much, Catherine. And it's so great to be here with all of you this evening. My name is Maria Finan, and I'm an assistant director of admissions at the University of Notre Dame. I also happen to be what we call a double domer. So I not only got my bachelor's degree at Notre Dame, but I stayed for my master's degree as well. If you're not familiar with Notre Dame, we're located in Northern Indiana. We're a mid-sized Catholic research institution with a focus on the liberal arts. We are primarily undergraduate focused and we are really kind of guided by our founding mission as identified by our founder, Father Soren. Father Soren envisioned the university as being one of the most powerful means for doing good in this country. And that idea of being a force for good is really integral to the Notre Dame experience. So not only will you get an excellent education in the classroom, but that full person development is really important. Our students come from all 50 states and around the world, from all different backgrounds and all different faiths. At Notre Dame, we really want students to have an opportunity to explore what they're passionate about. You'll pick an intended major to apply to Notre Dame, but you have a lot of time to decide what it is you're most passionate about. During your first year, you won't officially join a college or major until the end of the year. You'll have an opportunity to dive right into classes if you know what you want to study, or you can take a more exploratory first year as you really hone in on what it is you want to do. There are a lot of opportunities to learn both inside and outside of the classroom, whether that's doing research, studying abroad, or getting involved in internships, clubs, and other activities. On campus, we have an incredibly strong community that is primarily grounded in our residence halls. At any given time, approximately 80% of our students are living on campus. We guarantee you housing for all four years. And as a first year student, we'll randomly place you in one of our 32 residence halls on campus. Our dorms are single sex, but mixed major and mixed year. They have their own mascots and colors and special events. The dorms are really your first family at Notre Dame and students tend to really enjoy having the upperclassmen to get to know. You'll stay for six semesters. Maybe you'll send one or two of those abroad, but you can stay on as a senior and take on those additional leadership roles within our community. I have noted that we are a faith-based institution. So Notre Dame is a Catholic university, but you don't have to be Catholic to go to Notre Dame. We're welcoming to students from all different religious backgrounds or degrees of lack of religiosity. Students often ask me kind of, what does it look like to have faith life on campus? And I think one of the biggest ways that faith is really lived out at Notre Dame is through service. That ties back to our mission of being a force for good and using your education to benefit others. It's by no means a requirement, but approximately 80% of students will do service before they graduate, whether that's here in the South Bend community, in their own local communities, or somewhere across the country or internationally. 
students also often wonder about kind of what comes next? How do you find your next step? At Notre Dame, we have a lot of support for our students when it comes to thriving in academics, getting experience, whether that's in a lab setting, in archives, internationally, or finding that job or internship. It's a really great fit for you. We're really proud that we have a 98% retention rate. I think that really speaks to how strongly supported our students feel in the classroom and also socially. We have a 95% on-time graduation rate, which is really important to us because we know you're making a really big investment in your college education and we want you to graduate on time. In a normal year, within six months of graduation, 98% of all of our students, regardless of what they study, have found their next step within six months. So that might be a full-time job, that could be going on to graduate or professional school. Some of our students enter the military or commit to doing full-time service. A really incredible resource is our alumni network. Almost any city you can wind up in will have an alumni club and they support students when it comes to finding those internships, finding those service opportunities, or being that social network after a student graduates. Affording Notre Dame is also something that's really important to us. For all of our domestic students, our citizens, our permanent residents, and students who are undocumented, we read applications need blind. This means that your family's ability to pay is not a factor in our admissions decision. And for all of those domestic students, we do meet 100% of demonstrated financial need. If we admit you to Notre Dame, we wanna make sure that you're able to afford a Notre Dame education. And a last note for you, we are test optional at Notre Dame for the next several years. So it's really up to you whether or not you feel that a test score will strengthen or add to your application, in which case you might wanna submit it. Or if you don't feel like it represents your full academic potential, you can opt to apply test optional as well. If any of this sounds interesting to you or you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them in the chat. I will also share out my contact information so you can contact me going forwards if you have any questions. I am the representative for Northern California, so I'd be happy to interact with you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you being here tonight. Awesome, thank you. The next representative is from Trinity University. Hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. I know it's been a long program, um, but hopefully we're saving the best for last year. Uh, so my name is Elena Wilson. I am representing Trinity University in San Antonio, Texas. I've been in admissions now for three years. I'm also the coordinator for athletic recruitment here and a proud Trinity alum. I wanted to use my, my time today to just highlight our five big distinctions. I think um, those combined, you're not going to find another institution like us. Um, so first is going to be our size. We are a small private, um, predominantly undergraduate serving institution, about 2,500. Um, our nine to one student faculty ratio shakes out to an average class size of about 15 to 20 students. And they're being taught um, by the expert in the room, not by a graduate student or a TA. We, we don't have those. Um, and a, a recent U.S. News and World Report actually ranked our faculty top six in the nation, sandwiched between um, Stanford and I believe Rice, which is really exciting and speaks bounds to um, the, the level of collaboration and mentorship that our professors um, take very seriously at, at Trinity. Our second um, biggest distinction, I think, is what I call the Trinity twist to uh, a traditional liberal arts that uh, might come to mind for some people. When you apply to Trinity, you're applying to the university as a whole. We're not siloing you in to um, any major or minors you have until the end of your sophomore year to figure that out. We encourage you to face style across the curriculum and just take what sounds interesting to you. Um, but what's really unique is that beyond just our strong liberal arts foundation, we have five strong pre-professional programs, a fully accredited school of business, top 33 ranked engineering school, the oldest computer science program in Texas, a robust communications department, and a top 10 education program. All this to say, we do see a lot of fun double majors um, come out of our flexible curriculum. About a third of our students double major, 
and sometimes blending something with the humanities and STEM, like we've seen neuroscience and music or art and biology. We, we definitely don't want you to have to make compromises here. Um, this also really bleeds into my next point of what I'm gonna talk about resources and how we invest in the experiential learning opportunities for our students. We take that very seriously. We have a $7 million um, student managed fund available to students. They just sign up for the class and they get to play around with $7 million in the stock market. That actually started um, from our $1.5 billion endowment. That endowment, we took $1 million, helped our students invest it, and they have since grown it over the years to that $7 million. You're also gonna see this endowment go probably first and foremost to our generous awarding of both need-based and merit scholarship. I think that's why we've been ranked number one for that. Um, we really are committed to seeing students to and through Trinity. Um, you're also going to see those resources in the physical plant of campus. I'm floating around right now in my virtual background in a $130 million Center for Sciences and Innovation, but beyond just our awesome academic buildings, residential life is big here. Uh, you live on campus for the first three years. It's all sweet style and under no circumstance, you can have to walk through a haunted hallway and share a bathroom with 12 people. So we make sure that you're, you know, um, in, in a nice, comfortable living area. And it's key also to just integrate it into the active campus community. Our fourth big distinction, hands down, is our location. We are not some small liberal arts school in the middle of nowhere. We are in the seventh largest city. The economy is phenomenal here. So plenty of internship and, and job shadowing opportunities for our students, um, even before they graduate. More than 80% of our students hold at least one internship or undergraduate research before they graduate. And I think we can attribute a lot of that due to our location. It's so easy and accessible for our students. It's, a, it's an affordable city, but more than that, people really understand um, the value of a Trinity education and they respect it. a Trinity grad. They're excited to, to hire us, which is exciting. Um, beyond that too, San Antonio is a very fun city. I don't know how much you guys know about it, but we have the San Antonio Spurs. Fiesta, which is like our version of Mardi Gras, kind of. It's a two-week celebration. The whole town shuts down. Um, it's it's a 300-plus-year-old city, so um, never a dull moment with um, cultural and historic events, and the art scene is really bumping. So, um, again, just can't talk up enough about how it's a really fun city for our students to grow in and making sure that they're getting that growth outside of the classroom. Um, last and certainly not least is our diversity. For a school our size, um, I should I need to update this number. We're actually 42% of our students are from historically underrepresented backgrounds. And this is broadly defined folks, like um, coming from different, different corners of the globe, um, different uh, backgrounds, socioeconomic status, religious identity, political beliefs, you name it. Um, Trinity has it. We want to prepare you to, to go out into a world that um, and we're, we're prepared to have great conversations with people from all different um, backgrounds. Also want to highlight that we have fun at Trinity. Uh, we are a very competitive D3 um, program. There are about 430 plus Division three programs out there, and we're consistently ranked within the top 25. Um, we also have a very active um, student population in community service, but also in um, Greek life or in the performing arts. A quarter of our students do that. You don't have to be formally declared major or minor in those programs to um, be in the musical or, or whatever floats your boat. And I don't have enough time to go through the nuts and bolts of application, but really what you need to know is we are a, a free application. We are test optional. There's no supplemental essay. Um, and I will be your point of contact. I look forward to connecting with you. So thanks so much. Very helpful information. Thank you. Just a friendly reminder that if you have any questions at all, to feel free to submit any questions you have through the Q&A. Our representatives are here and available to answer your questions. And if you have a specific question, to also note the school name. The next representative is from Swarthmore College. All right, thanks so much, Catherine. And thank you to everyone who's staying with us um, tonight. I'll be presenting briefly on Swarthmore College. 
Um, my name is Yo Quinjo. I'm an uh, assistant dean of admissions at Swarthmore and also uh, the regional person for Northern California. So if you want to learn more about Swarthmore, liberal arts or admissions, um, I am your resource. So feel free to email me and I'll drop that uh, email address in the chat in a little bit as well. Um, some big picture things about who we are. We are a small private college of liberal arts, sciences and engineering located right outside the city of Philadelphia. We're a small college of roughly 1600 students who represent all 50 states in the US as well as over 85 countries across the globe. Um, there are over 40 programs of study to choose from. And one thing that's really important about this work community is this commitment to social justice, access equity, as well as inclusion and affordability of higher education. So we're a liberal arts institution. So really the beauty of liberal arts is that you're learning through the world, um, learning the world through multiple lenses of humanities, uh, social sciences and the, and the natural sciences. And you'll walk away with these transferable skills that'll make you successful at whatever you choose to do later on in life. And in addition to that, there are lots of um, uh, perks when it comes to being on a small uh, residential community where you get to build really intentional and close relationships with both uh, world-class professors as well as your peers. And you'll get to share um, lots of generous resources when it comes to financial aid, funding for internship, being able to do research, um, you know, uh, with your professors and enjoy um, emergency funding, equitable um, study abroad programs with financial aid that carries over as well. So this is where Swarthmore is um, on the East Coast, uh, right outside the city of Philly. This is the picture of the skyline of Philly from our campus. Um, very easy access to other major cities on the East Coast as well. So New York City and Washington DC are both roughly about two hours away. And we're very fortunate to be so close to a major city where we can enjoy all that Philly has to offer um, with just a short train ride. So the train station is actually right on the foot of campus and it takes you to downtown Philadelphia in just about 25 minutes. But at the same time, we enjoy a lot of natural beauty around us because our campus is also National Arboretum. So over 400 acres of, of woods, uh, there's a creek that runs through it, multiple hiking trails and an outdoor amphitheater, which is also where our students graduate from. Uh, and because it's an area very concentrated with colleges and universities, that also comes with some partnerships. So we share pretty much everything with our neighbors, Haverford and Brimmer Colleges, to other liberal arts schools. Um, so classes, their events, you can um, you know, utilize their facilities, dining hall, and go to all their performances, concerts as well. Um, and students can also cross register with the University of Pennsylvania, which is in the city of Philly, also about 20 minutes away on the train. Um, in terms of the academic offerings, there's lots of um, ways to customize your education because it's a very flexible curriculum. Um, there are interdisciplinary programs such as you know, gender and sexuality studies, peace and conflict studies, Latin American and Latino studies, where you can really focus on the intersections of different disciplines. Um, and you also get to design your own major, right? If it's not an existing major or, or department. So students have created things like international video game studies or architectural history of Philadelphia, right? Where you're working with multiple professors from different, um, different fields of study. There's also engineering, which is rare for a small liberal arts college. Um, and we have dedicated pre-professional advising for students who are thinking about a career in the medical field or thinking about law. And we have uh, a lot of success in sending students to those future plans. So that is 84% admission rate to med medical school and 92% to law school. So both of which are much higher than the national average. And lastly, uh, there's a unique honors program. There's no other program like this in the US where you dig really deeply into just a few select topics in your, uh, in your area of study and you get to examined by world experts on this matter that have nothing to do with Swarthmore, right? So they could be the member of the World Bank, a curator of the Louvre, or maybe an engineer at a large tech company, really the top of the world to examine, uh, to examine you on the, the, the topics that you've studied. And the academic environment at Swarthmore is very much collaborative because we have those policies in place to make sure that students work together. The very first semester is entirely pass fail. So no grades very first semester. We want you to really uh, find your pace, right? Being a college student for the first time. And we want you to work with your, with your peers. There's also no published GPA all four years. Of course, you can calculate it yourself, but that is not the focus of learning. Uh, we want you to enjoy learning and take intellectual risks while working with each other. And going back to kind of what I was saying at the very beginning about our uh, Quaker values, we're founded by the Quakers who believe in social justice, peacemaking, equity, and access. So our students are also attracted 
to this mission and they also share a desire to contribute to the common good. So close to a million dollars dedicated to funding student opportunities, whether that's student research on uh, anti-racism work or um, poverty alleviation, um, equity within education and the healthcare system, right? So students are able to um, utilize what they study and really be in touch with the world and engage with communities around us and beyond. Um, in terms of campus life, over 120, uh, clubs and organizations you can be a part of, which involves um, sports, performing arts, and lots of uh, identity-based groups as well, where students find community with those who share their interests or their experiences. And then the last thing that I'll touch on is our financial aid policies. There are three parts to that. Uh, we are need blind for all US citizens, permanent residents, as well as undocumented and documented students, which means we don't care how much you can pay for your education when we uh, decide to admit you. And we also meet full need. So um, the 100% of your determined uh, family financial need, we will need it with our financial aid award, which is also loan free. So that's the third part is that our financial award does not include any loans. Uh, it's the majority um, free money, right, that you don't have to pay back plus a small allocation of work study. And the average aid award from last year uh, is $56,000 a year. And the vast majority of our students graduate without any debt. Um, we're also test optional for this upcoming cycle. We're available on all three um, application platforms and we're also partner of QuestBridge. So um, I look forward to answering questions and staying in touch. Uh, please utilize me as a resource and I'll stop sharing and turn it over to my next colleague. So much great information, thank you. The next representative is from Marist College. Well, good evening. Uh, my name is Corinne Schell and I'm Director of West Coast Admission at Marist College. I am actually regionally, be, regionally based down in Carlsbad, uh, California, North San Diego County. Um, I am a Marist grad, my husband, son, daughter, sister, niece, nephew, twin nieces. So needless to say, I'm a little passion, passionate about everything that Marist offers our students. Uh, Marist College, we are a private four-year liberal arts college located in Poughkeepsie, New York, which is about an hour and a half north of New York City. Uh, we are in a suburban environment, but easily accessible to New York as we're about a mile from the train. Also in Poughkeepsie is Vassar College. There's a community college in town, the Culinary Institute of America is a mile up the road. Bard College is about a half hour north. There's a state university half hour west of us. And the Military Academy at West Point is about an hour south across the river. The picture that you're looking at here is of our campus taken from the Hudson River. Uh, I refer to it as the Academic Country Club as it's an absolutely uh, amazing campus with very strong academics as well as a wonderful uh, social uh, environment for our students. We are known as the Marist Red Foxes. Uh, that is our mascot. We have a little over 5,100 undergraduate students at Marist. Since we're liberal arts, one of our big majors for an incoming freshman is undecided. And that's okay. You have plenty of time to figure out exactly what it is that you would like to pursue as a major. Um, we also have maximum class sizes since with our, in regards to our size of 35 students. No teaching assistant, no lecture hall, all of our classes taught by faculty. Uh, we do offer well over 40 different majors and there is a population of about a thousand graduate students which are all online. And Marist does offer uh, a four year, five year program for many of our majors, especially in communications, business, public administration, uh, as well as uh, computer science and psychology. Uh, the student body is represented by 47 different states and 64 different countries. Here's a listing of the different majors that we offer. Some very popular are from business administration. We actually have an investment center on campus, so our students in finance are trading on Wall Street Monday through Friday using real money. Uh, we do offer communications. Again, we're very close to the city, so a lot of our students will take advantage of internship programs, in advertising, public relations, sports communication. So if you wanna see what it's like to be in front of the camera, behind the camera, ESPN, or see what it's like to run the Yankee organization, that's something that you may be interested in. We also have fashion design, fashion merchandising, which is incredibly popular. We're fifth in the country, 25th in the world for our programs. Uh, we also have computer science uh, internships at uh, Google, Microsoft, IBM, 
Goldman Sachs, 90% of those students have jobs before they enter their senior year. Um, student success rate, 98% of our students within six months of graduation are employed or in grad school. We do have an honors college. Uh, we are not a, a research institute, but our students have the opportunity to do research and they can, be, can begin doing research as early as their freshman year. And it, it's across all types of disciplines as well. We do have a campus in Florence, Italy. Uh, it is the Marist campus. We are in the heart of Florence, a stone's throw away from the Duomo. Uh, we do offer a full uh, bachelor's degree over there. We're the only college uh, or university in Florence that offers a full four-year degree. We have a freshman program uh, where students choose to study in Florence for their freshman year, or we have another freshman program in Dublin, Ireland uh, at the Dublin Business College. The only two majors uh, offered here that are not offered in New York are art restoration, conservation, and interior design. Uh, speaking of study abroad, more than half of our students will study abroad at some point during their college career to well over 70 different destinations around the world. Uh, we offer semester programs, short-term programs, and as I mentioned before, we do have our first year programs. We are a division one school for sports. We have 23 varsity. We have 16 club sports, everything from men's volleyball, equestrian, ice hockey, cheerleading, and men's and women's rugby. Uh, we also have a very strong, uh, oh my gosh, intramural program at Marist. 96% uh, of our incoming freshmen live on campus. The other 4% are students that live home with their parents. So they are traditional commuters and 90% of our upper class students do live in college housing. Um, we offer many, many different single residents as well as uh, double occupancy for townhouses and suite style living. And our dining hall is a Harry Potter style dining hall that has a sushi bar. So our students really do enjoy that. 90% uh, of our students that apply for financial aid receive it. We do offer merit-based, academic-based scholarship. If you're eligible, it's part of your acceptance letter. We do have special programs, everything from theater to music, choral, instrumental, and we do participate with Army, ROTC. Uh, as mentioned, West Point is right there, so uh, makes sense. And then we do offer pre-college programs for our students. Uh, this is the way you can apply for admission. And here's some of our different programs that we offer uh, on campus. We do have a very strong uh, program for learning support uh, for our students that have learning disabilities, uh, one of the best in the country. The woman who started our program when she moved west started the SALT program in Arizona. So I will put my contact information up in the box for you in the chat box. Uh, and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. We are open, so if you wanna schedule a visit to campus, please feel free to do so. And now I'm gonna turn it over to my colleague from University of Miami. Great, thank you. Just another friendly reminder that if you have any questions at all to feel free to submit those through the Q&A. Um, any questions at all about the uh, application process or if you have a specific question for a school to also include uh, the school name in your question as well. The next representative is from the University of Miami. Great, thank you so much, Catherine, and thank you so much to all of you for joining us tonight. My name is Jenny Antonelli, and I'm an assistant director at the University of Miami, and I do cover the Bay Area. So to get started, I'm going to give you some high-level facts. So we were founded in 1925, so we are a a uh, younger institution than a lot of other schools. And we're a lot smaller than a lot of people think. So most people see our big sports teams on TV, automatically think we're this big 50,000 student institution, but that's not the case. You really are a name and a face at UM. We have about 10,000 undergraduate students and about 6,000 grad students. Our average classes range from 16 to 27 students, so you really get to know your professors and they get to know you. We have students from 48 out of the 50 states and students from more than 100 countries, uh, so we do have a great representation of different cultures on campus. Now we have more than 180 majors and programs and they fall into 11 schools and colleges. Nine of them are undergraduate, and then we have our law school and our Miller School of Medicine. 
something about UM is that we are a direct admit university. So what that means is if you know what it is that you're interested in studying, then you would put that down on your application. And if you're admitted, then you'll start out in that school or college. So you'll get to start taking classes in that major uh, so that you'll be able to know early on if it's something that you like. And if it isn't, then you have more time to change your mind and to change your major. If you don't know what it is that you're interested in studying, that's okay too. Uh, that's part of what college is about. You have time to figure it out. You would put undecided on your application and then you'll start out in the College of Arts and Sciences and you'll get to start taking classes in different areas to determine what it is that you want to study. Now, one important thing to mention is that your major does not factor into our admission process unless you are interested in architecture or the performing arts. So if you're interested in architecture, we do suggest a portfolio. And if you're interested in the Frost School of Music or the Theater BFA program, then we do require an audition. Otherwise, we are looking for the best fit student to attend the University of Miami. Something else in terms of our academics that I'd like to highlight is our general education program. So we have something called the Cognates program. A Cognate is a set of three courses that are related to one another. You have to fulfill three cognates, one in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, one in arts and humanities, and one in people and society. So you're taking three classes in each of these three areas of knowledge. Now your major will automatically fall into one of these three categories. So you won't have to worry about that one because of course you'll have more than three classes to complete your major. So now you really just have to focus on the other two. So you really just need three other classes in each of those two areas of knowledge. So it's essentially just six courses and that will complete your general education requirements. Now we like to say that our students are the architect of their own education and that's for a couple of reasons. You have flexibility in terms of which courses you take. We want you to take classes that you are passionate about and that you really and truly are interested in. And then you can also take these classes at different points in time. So you're not taking your gen eds your first two years and then your major courses your last two years. Since I was mentioning how we're direct admit and you come in taking courses in your major, you're taking your courses for your major and your courses for your cognates all at the same time. A lot of our students call these mini minors. Uh, it's really easy to build upon them. You've already taken three classes in something related to one another. You take two to three more and you have a minor. You take a few more than that and now you have a double major. We are also a research-based institution. All students are able to do research regardless of major. I know the pictures depicted on the screen are in the STEM fields, uh, but if you're interested in marketing or business or whatever it may be, you are able to do research as well. And it's something that you can start as early as your first year. Something else I like to highlight is where we are located. So we are the University of Miami, but we are located in a suburb of Miami known as Coral Gables. We're seven miles from downtown Miami. So I like to say students have the best of both worlds. You have your campus feel, you have the greenery, you don't have streets running through your campus, but then you have everything that goes along with being in a big city from the professional sports and the different cultures, performing arts centers, the museums, to of course job and internship opportunities. A lot of companies have offices in Miami. Uh, so that is definitely a plus uh, because you are so close to a big city. And the last thing I wanna mention is our deadlines. So we do have four different pools for students to apply into. You're automatically considered for merit-based scholarships regardless of the four pools you apply into. You'll be considered for scholarships that range from $5,000 to $30,000. If you apply by our November 1st deadline, so early decision one or early action, then you would be eligible for our premier scholarships. Those are full cost of attendance and full cost of tuition. Last thing I'll mention is, I know something on everyone's mind is about testing and if we're going test optional. Unfortunately, we do not know yet. Uh, so just hang tight on that. Uh, but that is it for me. So thank you so much. Uh, for your time tonight, and I will put my information in the chat as well. Please feel free to reach out at any time. 
Great, thank you. The last representative, but certainly not least, is from Olin College of Engineering. All right, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Dan Johnston, and I am uh, from Olin College of Engineering. Um, and I am our regional admission counselor. So tonight I'm going to talk a little bit about Olin, who we are, uh, why we do things, how we do them. Um, and so we'll go ahead and get started now. So a uh, little bit about Olin. Uh, we are in Needham, Massachusetts. Uh, it's a suburb of Boston, about 30 minutes outside of the city. Uh, we have about 330 students. And uh, why we were founded um, is really... Uh, uh, behind this idea of engineering for good. So everything that we do at our institution from the way that we are hiring our professors to recruiting our students uh, and hiring our staff members, everything is focused and centered on this idea of engineering for good. Now, uh, Olin, uh, we are a relatively young institution. We were founded in the late 90s. Our first graduating class was 2006. And um, so we are, are relatively young. So one of the questions we often get is, why uh, why have a college here, especially in the, in the Boston area? So aren't, aren't there enough small private uh, small private schools in the area? Well, it's because we had a really awesome opportunity to be a part of some other institutions through what's called the BOW collaboration, which stands for Babson, Olin, Wellesley. So our students um, can cross register at the different institutions. And so uh, Babson, if you are unfamiliar, is one of the premier business and entrepreneurship institutions in the country. Um, and, and Wellesley College, uh, similarly, is one of the top all women's liberal arts colleges in the country. So we kind of fit right in the middle there. Uh, and if you think of why that's important for an engineering school, if you think about what engineering does, engineering is always bringing something new to society. It's always bringing something new to the market, cutting edge of technology type things. Uh, a lot of our students are starting their own company or they're join, joining other startups. Um, and being able to take classes at Babson, for instance, in, in any type of business and entrepreneurship and accounting or finance, kind of the nuts and bolts of running a business, um, really is an opportunity that is, is like no other. Next, so how do we do this? How do we do this idea of engineering, uh, engineering for good? First of all, it's through a focus on undergraduate teaching and learning uh, in small supportive communities. So we are all undergraduates and, and that is on purpose. And one of the reasons why uh, is because we wanna limit the barriers that our students have uh, between faculty. So um, at larger institutions, which, which kind of makes sense, the, the, um, the research opportunities, uh, the internship opportunities, job placement, all of that tends to go to the highest level of student at that school first. So whether it's a master's or PhD level student. At Olin, we are all undergraduate on purpose, and that creates a lot of awesome relationships and very impactful relationships that our students have with staff members and more importantly, with faculty members. So our students, even as first and second year students, have um, a real uh, in-depth knowledge of what our professors are doing and have access to their labs to work on research with them, do internships with them, so on and so forth. And the small teaching, uh, the small and supportive community is uh, 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 kind of leads me into my next point which has to do with our curriculum is rooted in teamwork, project-based learning, and practical skills. So this idea of collaboration, of teamwork, is a major part of our student success. It's a major part of what we do. Um, and if you think about it, what happens after graduation when you are in, when you are, uh, you know, in the job market, when you are employed, very rarely are you going to be working on a project 100% by yourself, right? So you, you may have pieces of that, but you're going to be a part of a team. And Olin understands that. And so that's why our curriculum is a part of this. Um, we, don't, we don't require our students to do anything outside um, to get this kind of teamwork experience. It's a part of the curriculum. So they know how to be good teammates. They know how to be a leader when possible, but they also know how to just be a really good teammate. Uh, now, this project-based learning is um, uh, another thing that students are very interested in when they come to Olin. Uh, and are, basically what that means is that instead of having like a big lecture hall where you're, you know, you may have two or 300 people in a big lecture, and then the, you know, later on the next day or later in the week, you have a lab that kind of supports what the professor was lecturing about. You're going to be using your hands. You're going to be working on projects right away to reinforce what you are learning. So you're going to be able to, to hear what the professor is saying and see how that is applicable. Um, to the project that you are working on. Doing it this way also enables you to, um, uh, to gain a lot of practical skills and a practical knowledge. So you're not just kind of getting the theoretical knowledge of engineering, but the actual practical skills. 
Next uh, is that we have a focus on design, the arts and humanities, social sciences and entrepreneurship. So uh, we are Olin College of Engineering, but I like to describe us more as an all engineering school, not just engineering school. And if you go back to this, the, the idea of engineering for good, creating engineering and positive change in the world, we have to keep humanity, we have to keep society in mind. And so we don't just have tech classes at Olin. Uh, there, we, our students are studying the humanities and the social sciences to make sure that we are uh, keeping those other parts of um, society and humanity in mind. So the majors that we have at Olin, mechanical engineering, electrical and computer engineering, and then we have a general engineering degree uh, that has different concentrations, which you can see here. Um, uh, another thing I'll point out here, the impact after Olin, what you see on the screen are some of our highest employers, uh, where most, uh, a lot of our students are going, I shouldn't say most, where a lot of our students are going, and also where they're providing internships. You can see 100% of our grads uh, the past couple of years have done at least one technical internship, and the vast majority of them uh, have done two or more, and you can see the starting salary there of about $90,000. Um, coming straight out of college. And then finishing up here, uh, our application and admission process. Um, we have a, a bit of a unique process. It is two parts. I'd love to talk with you more about it um, in one of our virtual information sessions um, over at olin.edu. Um, and I'll point out here that Olin meets 100% of demonstrated need based off of the FAFSA. And we do have a merit-based award that is available to every student that is admitted to Olin that um, that is half the value of tuition. So every student gets that regardless of citizenship status or merit um, or uh, financial aid. So thank you so much. And um, let me know if you have any other questions. Awesome, thank you. We do have a little bit of time left. So at this time, we're gonna go ahead and pivot into our Q&A portion of the session. Um, and at this time, I'll invite all our presenters if they can turn on their cameras to get ready to unmute themselves. And our first question here is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Again, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And we'll go ahead and get started in the same order in which you all presented it. Thanks so much, Catherine. I would say there are obviously so many great colleges out there and it may be hard to know kind of exactly what you want at this point, but I think it can be helpful to think about maybe what you don't want in a college as a starting point. And obviously we have so many amazing resources available online at this point. So definitely take advantage of all the virtual offerings and also social media that colleges have to offer. And I'll pass it off to Trinity. I think when campus visits become more available again, definitely take advantage of those. But in addition, I would recommend, whether it's in your notes app or on a sheet of paper, Immediately after your visit, make a pro con list. Um, I know that really helped me in the process to sort things out because then you can revisit it later down the road. You might forget after visiting a handful of schools. It just helps um, clarify some things and really just going out unfiltered with your pro con list. You'd be surprised um, how meaningful that might be looking back at it a, a few months after the fact. Uh, one piece I'll give is try to connect with current students as much as you can because they offer the most genuine, unfiltered, firsthand experience of what it's like to be a student there. Trying to connect with someone who might share your experience, your background, or might be coming from your hometown. So you really see uh, what life is like for a student like yourself. And um, to really get to know the campus culture, right? Read their you know, newspapers, see what students are talking about, right? What is important to this campus community and try to make those connections as much as you can. All such great advice. Uh, my little piece of advice is to have fun with the process uh, and enjoy it. Remember, this is your journey uh, and only your journey. And just remember two words, fit and depends. And the colleges need to be a fit for you and you need to be a fit for the college. And we're all different. You have six schools here today uh, and we are all different. So you need to do the research um, on your little journey. I agree with all the re uh, all the information uh, given here. I would also say, going off of what Corinne said, be your true self. So this 
application process is your opportunity to show us who you are. We are interested to learn about you. Uh, so be sure to share all of those important aspects and characteristics with us. Uh, we enjoy uh, reading your applications. Um, and I will uh, throw this in here that if you have the opportunity to do an interview, even if it is an optional interview, I strongly suggest that uh, demonstrated interest can be um, somewhat important uh, in some schools applications, uh, but also it gives you an opportunity to to get a more personal um, interaction with somebody, whether that's with a, a student or with an admission professional. Uh, so do those interviews if they are available, because it, it may help you identify something that was missed in an information session um, or something like that. And it really gives you a more personal connection with the institution. So plus, we love to hear from you when we love to speak with you and get to know you a little bit more one on one. So much great advice. Uh, thank you so much to our presenters um, for the advice, all the great information and for being here with us. We really appreciate it. And thank you to each of you for joining us. We have now reached the conclusion of this session. As we close, there'll be a very quick four question survey that will appear on your browser. If you don't mind taking a moment to fill that out for us, it will be very helpful. This is one of many college presentations being offered. And so feel free to sign up for more at the same place where you've registered for this one. And lastly, this session will be available as a recording at strivescan.com backslash BACS. Again, thank you all and have a great night.